There we go. Ooh. And he's a puller. Oh, he wants to fight. Come here, you. Folks, Glenn May here with BassResource.com, and today I want to talk to you about vibrating baits. These are things like rattle traps, the Booyah One Knocker, uh, the, the Savage Gear Soft Vibe, all sorts of baits like that. What I'm talking about are, <laughs> look at all these. You know, these are some of my baits. Uh, these are the hard baits, the rattling kind. And I have this is the Savage Gear Soft Vibe. If you guys haven't seen this before, this is actually a soft plastic bait. See that? See how it twists? Yeah. There's no rattles in it, obviously. It's a soft, solid, soft body. But it's another one of these lipless, some of them call them lipless crankbaits, vibrating crankbaits, however you want to call them. But that's what we're talking about today, these kind of baits. I've got one tied on to my rod right now. I've been fishing with it for a little while. These are great. These are great year-round, actually. They work really well when you cast them in the wind. They fire like a bullet. They don't have a whole lot of resistance to them, so when it's windy outside, you can cast this and use it when you can't use other crankbaits. You can fish it at different depths, which is great. A lot of crankbaits, you can only go down so deep. These, you can go as deep as you want them to. Just let it keep on sinking until it gets to the depth you want. You can fish it at different speeds. It's great for covering a lot of water, a lot of different depths to find fish. The key is, of course, when you're fishing them, you have to pay attention to how deep you are and what your speed is when you catch a fish so you know exactly where they are. But uh, they're great fish finders. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit today, first of all, the, the equipment, how to rig them, how to modify them, that sort of thing. And then we're going to go out and show you a few retrieves that catch a lot of fish for you. So let's start off with the equipment, with the rod. The rod here I have specifically, it's a seven foot crankbait rod. It's a medium power, fast action tip. So you can see it's got a lot of bend, a lot of flex to it. All right, that's, that's key. That is key. The reason you want that parabolic action is to have a lot of give when the fish bites. These hooks aren't huge, so there's not a lot of bite in those hooks. So the fish can leverage against it, actually pull, rip the hooks, hooks free, but if that rod's got a lot of bend, a lot of give to it, then every time that fish makes a run for it, that rod gives and allows those, those hooks to stay in the fish's mouth. So that's really key. Plus, with a parabolic bend like that, you know, moderate action, it allows that rod to load up on the cast and you can fire that bait way out there, which is great when you're covering flats. You need to cover a lot of water, large expanses of flats and weeds. That's what you want, is to be able to get it way out there. Paired with it, I have, this is, a, this is a Helios rod. I have a Helios reel from Akuma. I love this, the Helios Air. This is a seven three to one gear ratio, I believe. And uh, you want a fast reel, a moderately fast reel. Because you do fish these really slow, you want to have that flexibility, but when you're fishing it really fast, you need a reel that can really crank it in really quick when you want to burn that bait back. So a, a, a reel that's got, over a seven to one gear ratio is what I like for crankbait fishing. Doesn't need to be a nine to one or super high speed, but over seven to one is what I like to have for fishing these baits. And paired with that, I'm using fluorocarbon line. This is, this is Seaguar's Tatsu fluorocarbon line, 12 pound test. There's a lot of reasons why I use fluorocarbon for this. Fluorocarbon, first of all, has the sensitivity I need to feel the bite, because sometimes the bites aren't that strong they just nip it, they come from behind, keep swimming with you, and you just feel a little bit different cadence in the, in, the, in the vibration of the bait. So you need to feel that transmitting through the rod, through the line. This rod has micro guides on it, which are more sensitive than standard guides. But this line, 12 pound test, is about what I like to have, because it allows this, this bait to get down to the depths pretty quickly. Fluorocarbon is dense, so it does sink a little bit, lets, it get, lets the bait get down there. Monofilament has a big bend in it. It's, a, it's, it's more buoyant, has a big 
curve like this when you're when you're pulling the bait back there's a lot of extra line in there you don't have as direct connection to the bait as you do with fluorocarbon i don't use braid for two reasons braid is buoyant for the exact reason it has that bend in it and won't let that bait get down as deep as i want it to but also braid is not it's not that great in rocks it'll get frayed it'll get cut up and you can end up breaking off and losing a bait fluorocarbon is more uh, durable in rocks and it's also very versatile in weeds and wood and everything so it's a real good all-around kind of line to use for fishing crankbaits if i'm going to throw in heavy cover i might heavy up a little bit and go to 15 or 17 pound line but typically 12 pounds is exactly what i want that works really well for this aha <laughs> You're right, he does not, oh, he's got a little fight left in him though. All right, you. Can you do an easy release and shake yourself off of that line? <laughs> oh no, I got him. <laughs> you got him hooked weird. <laughs> he did that to himself. He's hooked really weird. You weren't going anywhere, but somehow you impaled yourself. You slapped at it and it got you. <laughs> yeah. The sharp hooks. They're gone. Small mouth don't mess around. Now, let's talk a little bit about the bait. The interesting thing about these baits, First of all, you know, a lot of people, if you read articles uh, about fishing, especially rattle traps, if they're older ones, they'll say right away, throw the hooks away and put in new ones. Because that was the case. Back in the day when Bill Lewis came out with those rattle traps, the hooks were notoriously bad. You wouldn't even want to use them. They've since corrected that problem. And most baits today, this is the Buya One Knocker. I just showed you the Savage Gear soft vibe the hooks that come with them are very strong and extremely sharp right out of the box i do touch them up sometimes i check every hook point to make sure they're all sharp and sometimes i touch them up right out of the box but for the most part the hooks are really good i don't need to change them out what i do change out sometimes is the split ring in this case you can see that i have a snap attached to it not a swivel snap or snap swivel it is just a snap and there's a reason for that. Now, if the bait comes with a, a split ring that's, a, that's round like that, what always happens is the knot inevitably finds that spot between the wires, and then those wires rub against the knot and end up breaking it right there at the knot. So with split ring, round split rings, I take those off and I replace them with a snap. The other cool, th cool thing about a snap is it's really easy to change baits. You don't retie, you can just unhook and put another bait on, you're back to fishing really quick. But there's some baits that come with an oval snap uh, and that, uh, sorry, with an oval split ring and those wires are, on, they connect on the side. Well, the knot's never going to reach that because it's going to sit in the, in the curved part of that oval split ring. So those work fine. I don't, I don't pull those out. I don't, I don't swap those out. I can just tie directly to them. Uh, but if it's a round split ring, definitely replace them. All right, let's talk sizes and colors here for a little bit. There's all kinds of sizes and colors these baits come in. They, they, they've got different weights, they're floating, sinking, suspending, the whole nine yards. But if you're just starting out, look, stick by the tried and true. Half ounce bait, start with that. That is standard size and chrome colors. Specifically, chrome with blue back, just like that one. And you can get a chrome with black back. And that will work for most of your scenarios. Mostly sunny days work really well when it's sunny, put in chrome. Uh, a little bit of wind on the water, a little bit of chop, a chrome. This is, this is why I got tied on. It's an old standby, it works really, really well. In super clear water, then I'll go a little bit more natural colors uh, that aren't so flashy. So for example, here I've got, you know, the soft vibe. Comes with like a shad color here. Here's more of a perch pattern. A little more natural colors. They don't get so much of a flash, but they look more realistic. So I'll use those in really clear water. And then in 
cloudy conditions, I'll use something more of a gold. Maybe a, a, a gold pattern or a, a gold chrome with a black back, something like that. That works really well in those conditions. But just stick to those colors and you'll have most of your stuff covered. The only one I would maybe add to it would be like a red color for the spring. Uh, in the early spring to mid spring, uh, a red color works really well. Other than that, you don't need to go crazy with all the colors. I showed you a bunch of baits earlier on, and that was a <laughs> that's a product of me going crazy when I shouldn't have. Don't be like me. <laughs> Just stick to the basics. You'll be fine. So that's that's the uh, that's the setup. Those are the baits. Now let's get out to casting those and showing you how they work. I actually caught a fish, and it's a large mouth. And it's a large mouth on the one knocker. And look at that, he's got a face full of it too. Come here, you. Come here, you. I did not want to get hooked. Stop it. I do not want to get hooked. Stop it. Got ya. Right there. One knocker. What are you doing over here? <laughs> All right. Let's let this beast go. Large mouth. I don't know what you're doing over here, but go play. All right, so let's talk a little bit about retrieves, some of the different ones you can use. It's pretty versatile bait, so let me go through several of these. The first one is just a straight retrieve. Now, you would think that's simple enough, but it's funny how I think the most common mistake people make with these baits is they reel them in too fast. Just a nice, easy retrieve. See this? I'm not reeling really fast. It's a light, small bait. It's easy to, to overwork it because it, it does come through the water very effectively. So a nice, slow to moderate retrieve is the most effective. You tend to get bigger bites when you fish it slower. Um, so remember that when you, when you start using it. The thing is, is what happens is after 5, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, your retrieve will start to speed up. I do that. It's, I'm, I'm totally guilty of doing that. So gut check yourself every once in a while when you're out there fishing it. Am I reeling it too fast? Am I reeling it too fast? Keep asking yourself that. Make sure you, you're, you're reeling it nice and slow and easy because you'll catch bigger fish doing it that way. So that's the first thing to do. The next retrieve is, it's funny, it's actually the opposite of that, but this is really effective when you have submerged weeds such as milfoil, submerged hydrilla, you want to burn it back. Burn it back right over the tops of that. Now, if the fish are buried up in there, they can't see the bait coming through, uh, coming through the water, they can just hear it and they can feel that vibration. You want to get that reaction strikes and you want that to go by them really quick. They don't have much chance to think about it. They just strike it. So that you want to bring it back quickly. Keep your rod tip up so it doesn't dip, bury down into the weeds and just bring it back pretty quick. Right over the tops of this. This is really good when the weeds are like maybe two feet three feet under the water. Perfect way of bringing it right over the top and you'll get a lot of strikes that way. The key thing when you're fishing weeds is that sometimes you'll get you'll get it stuck. You'll get it stuck into the weed. It'll tick the tops of those weeds and, it'll, and you'll catch some weeds on the on the bait. It's really easy to free that, especially if it's hydrilla. Hydrilla will come right off if you just realize you get that weed on there, you just give it a pop. That's all you got to do. Pop, pop, and it'll pop those weeds right off. Milfoil tends to stick like Velcro sometimes, so it may not be as easy to do it that way, but uh, that's how you get the, the weeds off your lures. And you know, it's funny is when you do that, that often elicits a reaction strike. So keep that in mind when you're fishing weeds. Another way to use this lure, and this is what makes it so versatile, is a yo-yo retrieve. This works really well when the bite is off, when they're really with lethargic and they don't want to chase a bait down. Let it fall. Let it sink, and then all you're going to do is you're just going to reel up and then let it fall again. Also here, I'm just reeling up the slack. I'm letting it fall on slack line. 
and then just point the rod tip down and bring it back up. You want to bring that rod back down ready for the hooks, you know, the, the strike, the hook set. But let it fall again on semi-slack line and then just bring it back up again. This looks like a dying bait fish. And if the bass, if the bite really isn't on, the bass will key on that. They're, they're pre-programmed by nature to, to attack injured bait fish. And that's exactly what you're mimicking here. Oh, I just had a little bite right there, as a matter of fact. <laughs> that was a little fish. I could see him. This is clear water. But that's a great way of catching fish when they're, when they're not really active, actively pursuing baits. Another retrieve is the stop and go retrieve. And I don't know why I keep hooking my line on here, but for whatever reason, I am doing that. But the stop and go retrieve is one of my favorites because it's an erratic retrieve. It does make it look like the uh, the fish is is injured or disorientated. All you do is you cast it out there, and as you're retrieving it in that nice slow to medium speed, like I mentioned again, just pause, stop, and then bring it up again and start retrieving it. Pause, and then give it a few more cranks. Pause, and then crank some more. For a while and then pause for longer as you can see i'm doing it erratically uh, there's no cadence to this you want it to look erratic you want it to look disorientated and a disoriented fish doesn't pause stop pause stop pause stop it has to be erratic so keep that in mind a lot of the bites happen when you've paused the bait sometimes when you're bringing that bait in for a while just give it a pause anyway sometimes the fish are just following it and suddenly it stops and it's right in their face and they have no no time at all to react to it and they usually do and you'll get a bite that way, right? That pause. One other uh, trick I want to show you here is when you throw it out, because these baits are so versatile, they can fish a lot deeper than most crankbaits. So this is where it can be really fun to fish. As you cast it out there and let that thing sink. You let it sink, 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 sink. And then when it hits the bottom, all you're doing is you're just, you just jig it up the bottom, lift it up. It looks like the yo-yo retrieve, except now we're actually doing it off the bottom. Let it hit the bottom. Let it sit there and then pop it off the bottom again. Give it a harder jerk. It's almost like a jigging spoon. Let it sit there on the bottom and sit in the bottom and then pop it off that bottom and reel up that slack and let it flutter back down. A lot of times the bite happens as that bait is falling back down to the bottom. So be ready to set the hook. This is a thing you, you can't do with other crankbaits. This is what makes vibrating crankbaits so much fun to fish. They're so versatile. You can do this especially in the winter time when other crankbaits don't work. Throw this in 40 feet of water. Yeah, I do. <laughs> it's 40 feet. And you can catch fish that deep by jigging it off the bottom that way. So those are some of the different tricks. I hope those tips help. For more tips and tricks, visit BassResource.com.